Hi, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 28 of our SpecFlow video series. And in this video we'll be talking about calling step definitions of one project to another project in SpecFlow. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 27 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Calling step definitions. We all know that we can call a step definition from anywhere within the same project and use it. But there are some situations that we may need to call a step definition from outside of another project which uses pretty much the same functionality. So how can we do that? Well, this can be achieved in SpecFlow using a feature called as external binding assemblies. So this is not exclusive feature for SpecFlow. Well, this is a C sharp feature and SpecFlow has implemented the same functionality and they call it as external binding assemblies where you can reference a SpecFlow assembly which has a step definition from one project to another project and they call it as a shared assemblies. So following are the things to be considered for the external assemblies for a SpecFlow step binding to work. Well, the external binding assembly can be another project in the solution or in compiled library of another project. And the external binding assembly can also use as a different .NET language. For example, you can write the bindings in your C Sharp SpecFlow project also in F Sharp, which is really cool. And the external binding assemblies has to be referenced from the SpecFlow project to ensure it is copied to the target folder and listed in the app.config of the specflow project, meaning the shared DLL file that you have should be available within the consuming project, else it cannot identify which particular DLL you are talking about. And the external binding assemblies can also contain different types of bindings within it, something like step definitions, hooks, and step argument transformations as well. That's a really, really a cool thing. And finally, the binding from the assembly reference are not fully supported in Visual Studio integration of SpecFlow version 1.8 or earlier. Well, the latest version of SpecFlow is 2.2.3 or something. This should not be a problem for the latest version. So I guess the last point is kind of obsolete right now. So the changes that we need to do for the configuration while working with the external assembly reference is this. We need to add the step assemblies tag within the specflow tag and within the steps assemblies tag we also have to add a step assembly and the name of the assembly that we have to use for the shared step definitions that we are intended to share with so this is the only change that we need to make and we also have to ensure that this particular assembly is sitting within the consuming project that we are looking for so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work so for that i'm gonna flip to visual studio Alright, so for this demonstration, I have created a very, very super simple project here, which is the sample specflow project. And you can see that it has a feature called login feature. And it is specifically for the login functionality of a web application. And it has a step definition here, which has been implemented like a console.write line. And you can see that it is pretty, pretty straightforward and simple. Much easier, much straightforward. Nothing great in here. So even if you run this particular selector test, you can see that the test will actually execute and the test will get passed. That's it. So simple it is. And what I did here is not to make the uh, existing codes to work, even if, for instance, you guys are working with the older version of SpecFlow. I just tried to use oldest version of the SpecFlow, which is kind of not the very oldest, but a little older, something like 2.1.0. And the end unit is going to be like 2.6.4. And the reason for this particular version that I have chosen is this because if you're going to use Xamarin.UI test for automating your applications for sharing the step definitions from one of the projects, then probably you should stick with the NUnit 2.6.4 version and SpecFlow as this version. And that's one of the important requirements for now because Xamarin.UI test will not support the latest version of NUnit. And that's the reason I have also downgraded this so that it's a kind of use case where you maybe end up this kind of situation as well. So that's the only versioning thing. Doesn't matter. You can use even the latest version and you can still work with that. It will still work fine. There is no problem in it. The only reason I have just stated this particular version is because of Xamarin.UI test users. All right. And now the scenario is this. Let's say tomorrow we have uh, another project within our same solution. And we're going to call the particular project as, let's call this as a 
because let's consider the sample spec flow is a web application project let's say tomorrow you're gonna work with a mobile application in our Xamarin so let's call this as a mobile project so I'm gonna make this as mobile project and I'm gonna hit OK and now the situation is this we have to share some of the libraries from this particular sample spec flow project within the mobile project and that's the kind of situation right now and also there are some situations where there are some step definitions here like you gonna log into web application and I enter username and password so here as you can see that given I log into web application so this is very specific to the web application of your project but as you can see here and I enter the username and password this is a kind of mechanism just assume that it is actually coming from two factor authentication and the username and password for both the mobile as well as the uh, sample spec flow project is going to be pretty much same and this is kind of very very logical thing I have so many cryptographic things going on and I really want to use this particular step definition in my mobile project as well so I just have this kind of situation where I actually have to use only this particular step definitions from another project within this mobile project so that I don't really have to spend so much of time in at least copy pasting it and maintaining the code in two different places so how do I do that well then comes our new feature which is nothing but the shared external libraries so how to do that it's pretty pretty simple all you have to do is this you can see that for this particular project for sure the name of the assembly is going to be sample spec flow which is the project name so I'm gonna copy the assembly name and now I'm gonna go all the way to this mobile project but here we don't really have any feature and step definitions yet so let me quickly do that so I'm gonna add a very very simple uh, feature file and also the step definition files alright so these are the two uh, different files I have added and then also I have to uh, add the step definition implementation so let's say uh, the step definition implementation is going to be pretty much looking like this guy instead of the given I log in as a web application I have something called as mobile application and I enter username and password so instead of using the implementation from our own I'm actually going to use this guy's implementation the sample spec flows implementation so I'm going to just add these step definitions in the uh, steps file right now I'm going to make this as public class binding and we also have to add the spec flow references here the version is going to be pretty much exactly the same version which is nothing but the 2.1.0 and also I have to add the n unit here and the version is going to be 2.6.4 which is actually the one which is supported currently with xamarin.ui test alright everything is cool and now the binding is available and also I'm gonna paste this particular bindings here I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna write the console.write line here pretty much pretty quickly alright everything is cool so now I'm gonna build a solution and you can see that if I try to execute this particular application you can have two different tests right now one is going to be login uh, functionality of the web application and login application okay this is going to be different uh, names so maybe I can change this to mobile I'm going to save this remove the test method uh, which is going to be sitting in the unit test 1.cs alright little tdr here and now if I try to execute these two tests you can see that this test took is going to get passed and if you go to the login functionality of the mobile and if you see the output here it says that I log in from mobile so instead of I log in from mobile I want to see I log in from web application which is anything but this guy I enter the username and password from web project something like that or this is going to be a sample of the project but still I consider this as a web, web application let me save it and now what I'm going to do is like this. I am going to make use of the feature which I mentioned before. So I'm going to go to the app.config file. And within the spec flow tag, you can add another tag which is called as a step assemblies. And within the step assemblies, you can add the step assembly. And assembly, which is going to be the assembly name of this guy. Which is nothing but 
the sample spec flow that we saw. All right, so that's it. That's the one thing which I need to add. And I'm gonna hit the S here. That's good, which means right now you're gonna configure in such a way that you make use of this particular uh, step definition, right? So I'm gonna save it. And now I am gonna copy the DLL file of the sample spec flow into the mobile project bin folder. So that's the most important thing else. It will not be able to identify which particular step definition that you're talking about. So I have to copy, if you want, you can copy the PDB or just these two files are more enough. So I'm gonna come to the mobile project and there we go, I'm gonna paste them. And now if I try to run this guys, let's see what's gonna happen here. So now if I go to the mobile, you'll get an error here. It says a very, very valid reason. It says that there is a ambiguous step definition found in, for the step given I enter username and password. So it now feels that the given I enter username and password is already implemented somewhere within the assembly being referenced, which is nothing but our step assemblies. So basically it now knows that there is a step definition implementation already exists somewhere which is being referenced within the assemblies here. So now it seems like our implementation is gonna change. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the login step.cs file and then I'm gonna delete this guy, save it. And now if I try to run this, now you can see that the board just get passed. And if you go to the login functionality of the mobile and if you see the output this time, you can see that I enter username and password is actually printing from basically from the uh, web application right so this is how you can see like how things are working basically using the shared assemblies using spec flow so this is very very useful where you don't really have to write the same kind of code in two different project you can share the step definitions from one project to another project in much simpler way by just specifying the assembly name within your app.config file and then you can make use of them that's it so that's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.